One thing I've learned, if you don't hold their feet to the fire, everybody gets burned. Feet. To the fire. Hold on, hold on. Before you start waving around that freedom of speech thing, when you're in a crowded movie theater and you scream fire, you better be able to smell smoke. You come on this radio show and you start saying incandescent or things like that, you better have better more behind you, pal, than just your thumb. Your thumb. I've been listening to talk radio for years, and one thing I just can't stand is when the host has to, like, push his way on the people, beat the callers into his way of thinking, extending his ego, or, or when the callers call in and say something so outrageous and the host lets it go unchallenged. The sign you're on the road to truth is the lack of contradiction. You want to find truth, you just don't simply believe somebody because of their authority or their degree or you, you listen to what they say, you test it against reality, and you hold their feet to the fire. All right, we are back and we are live, Feet to the Fire. I'm your host, James Althajancic, the Black Knight of Talk Radio. All righty. Yeah, I just did a show with uh, Richard Allen Miller. That's up on YouTube. I wanna, I'll want i get it up on Freaker once I, uh, once I go through and uh, upload the audio from it. But right now we have a talk with Jim Schultz. He is a... Psychic buddy I've known for the years in the 90s, and he had a regular spot on the show for many years coming on, I think it was once a month, every six weeks, something like that, and talking about, you know, the just what he picks up in energy uh, for what's going on in the world. And uh, in the last, oh, I don't know, several months, I, I, I looked at my Skype call. I haven't talked to him on Skype in a year, so like in the last year, things have been uh, less, I don't know what the word would be, uh, more hectic in how I put the show together and less regular. And uh, I thought about him when we were seeing about what's going on. What the heck is going on on the world? And I'm thinking like, man, I go, Hey, I haven't talked to Jim forever. So I gave him a call and he, uh, decided he would come, uh, on and, uh, and talk a bit. So, uh, let me get this button pushed and Hey, welcome to the show, Jim. Good evening. How are you, sir? All right. All right. It's been a little while. Party on my Skype, it's been a year. Really? I didn't think it was that long. I know it's been a while, but it's, uh, that's a long time. Well, yeah, maybe because, you know, Skype updated, you know, Microsoft can't leave anything alone, and who knows what monsters they're putting in the background. But uh... <laughs> Don't talk. <laughs> Don't say anything bad about him. No, 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 no. Yeah, especially if he's, mm-hmm. he's going to be putting, uh, wanting to put uh, stuff in our veins. So I want to kind of be careful about that. So what, you know, I, obviously yeah. there's like a million things going on in the world, everything from potential revolutions uh, to uh, forced vaccinations, uh, pandemics, you know. Uh, so what, 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 what have you been picking up on this? Well, I think there are so many different battles going on in the world today. Of course, we got to talk about Corona. Uh, of course, we got to talk about some other issues that are going on. But there's other battles that are going on. Even the stuff now they're talking about Russia's paying for to shoot Americans. I I don't believe that one bit, but that's what they're saying. Uh, we also have we we have become in this coronavirus. 
we have become a defeatist attitude. No, nothing's going to happen. I'll just sit at my house and I'll wait here and see what's going to happen when it happens and stuff. And it's taken our initiative away. And this is very, very dangerous for us. We have to, we are, we are a country. I was with uh, Wayne Dyer at a lecture one time and somebody asked him about the Middle East. And this is when the Middle East was really a hot button. And he had a wonderful statement about that. He said, he said, well, you know, this is a nation that's going to its destiny. And the Middle East is locked in its history. So the further and further we get along to our destiny, the further and further we get separated from the Middle East. And not that it's... Um, it's it's just an awareness that some things need some pe some people are just locked in their history and some people are going to their destiny, and this country has always been one to do this. Now I was thrilled to death as much as I'm not really a fan of Elon Musk, but I was thrilled to, thrilled to death when he was talking about going to the space station, and that has totally gotten locked or lost. In all of this, it's unbelievable to me that we have two astronauts in the space station, and I think they were they were there for one day, and they had them on the news with something. I don't forget what it was, but there has been nothing like this. You and I remember when they first started uh, the space travel with um, different rockets and stuff. Oh, man, at 6 o'clock, if you knew this rocket is the satellite was going over you know, the middle middle west, middle east or not middle east in the midwest you be out you had looking you said it is that it and now it's like nothing and this is one of the best things we have going as far as they're going to our destiny and it's exciting and it should be exciting but it's just gotten totally totally lost with what's with all this stuff that has been presented to us we also have a situation where we're going to have to somewhere, some way, somehow, go to uh, go through a major clearing, a major cleaning, and I don't, I don't think it has to be a uh, a re re reconstruction, redoing things people or something like that. It can be something that's very, very easy because there is so much darkness out there. And um, we have to have a way of clearing us ourselves after we're trying to find out information. And it's so important at this time for everybody to be alert because I think this is a much, much deeper situation. If there was a man in... Uh, let's say Australia, and for some reason the police had a reason to uh, where he passed away, whether he, they did something to him uh, that caused his passing. We would not be concerned about it here. Well, this this police action and uh, all the power, the power force, which is our police force has been destroyed all, or is being destroyed all over the world. So we have to be able to clear our thoughts and our mind periodically so we can be the ones who are a light in the middle of all this darkness. And it's really important for people who are in this field and um, are just even starting to come to an open-mindedness about life in general to simplify our transformation from the dark to the light. I, I mentioned it's very important if you're dealing with a lot of the things that are online or even just listening to the news. You, you need to sit back if you listen to the news and say, you know, I visited the dark darkness, now I'm going to the light. And if you do something as simple as that, that can change what's going on in your thought process. It's like having a book that's overtaking your time. See, it's a great mystery. You're really involved with a Stephen King book, and you're really 
not good. I mean, you want to get home to read some more of it. But in that case, if you've got a situation where you're you're reading the book, you close the book and you go on with your life until you come to a point where you want to go back to the book. In this situation, in this situation, by saying, I've been to the dark and now I'm ready to go to the, I need to be cleansed by the light. It pulls all that darkness. It can it compartmentalizes the idea of I've got this information, I will deal with it, or I will understand it in the future, or I might be a part of a solution, but you're going to hold that information for yourself until it's the right time for you to understand that it's okay to express it. Am I over-exaggerating then? Because it seems to me to be, like, uh, really bad. Like, it's not like people kind of figure things out or whatever. It almost looks like, you know, this is the beginning of a Bolshevik revolution or a Mao cultural revolution uh, in our country. I mean, is, is it is it not as, is it just real loud and nasty and not really that it's, powerful or what? It's It's not that powerful unless we give it the power. And that's what the media is doing. It just cannot. I, when I'm watching TV, when I have the TV on, and I see that little corona germ cell with the little red flowers on it and stuff, I have to close my eyes. I cannot look at that thing one more time. I just, it's like so embedded in my brain that I don't want to see it anymore. So when that happens, I'm, I'm going to light. And it clears it. So it, it's not that bad yet. But it's this is the first this is the first run on a very, very tall escalator. And we've just stepped on the first step. And it's going up higher and higher and higher. And in this process of it going higher and higher and higher, it's it it could it could be something really, really serious. But we have, as light workers, we have got to know that this is something that is something that is out of control. Um, we, I, I can't sit here in my office and say, well, I'm going to change that. Because I can't do anything about it. But I can tell other workers to go to the light, go to the light, bring in the light. And if you if you have um, if you want you have one cell phone and you open it up and you can maybe walk through your house in the dark, but if you have fifty cell phones, you'll have a lot of light. And that's exactly what we have to do because it is overpowering. It's it's and even in I was never I've never been amazed at how quickly things can change. Um, when this happened, I, I was dealing with a lot of families that were having, um, difficulties because some people have been together for 10, 12 years and they've been together, but they've never been in a situation that they've been in a lockdown where they were stuck with their partner for 24 seven. And unless you're in a balanced relationship, that's a very, very difficult thing to do. And then when you're in, if you're in a situation where both partners are working from home, it's quiet. I'm thinking here. And then you're, you're, it's like you're talking to somebody at work who has a common interest, but she might be a teacher and you might be a, um, you might be a car salesman. And you're trying to figure out how you're going to get some people into the shop, and she's trying to figure out how to, how to get the kids to be able to add from 28 to 32. And so we, it's very, very, it's a very tedious time for all of us. And we've been put through a lot, a lot of unnecessary pressure. And even in what we, what what really bothers me, we we are a country. That Aaron, we have um, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Right now, our 
life is crappy. I mean, I'm, I'm physically okay, I'm okay, and I'm doing all right and stuff. But life right now is a very, very tedious time. So life is a problem. Liberties are being taken away from us every day of the week. You got to wear a mask. You don't have to wear a mask. You can go to the grocery store and get toilet paper. You know you can't get toilet paper this week, but you can buy a pork roast. Um, so our our liberties, as far as choosing things for ourselves, is changing drastically. And because of this, there's no happiness. It's kind of funny. They were talking. Um, both Jimmy Kimmel and uh, the other guy. Uh, Jimmy Fallon are taking a hiatus from their TV shows for the summer. Well, the only reason they're doing that is they can't be funny anymore. Yeah, it's an excuse. Because there is nothing funny. And, you know, and if you start doing anything cut. anything that's a little off-color or a little whatever, now you're, uh, like, he's, he had to step back from doing some bit where he had blackface. It's like, come uh-huh. on. I mean, you know, I it's it's... It's one thing to do blackface and and uh, make fun in a stereotypical manner uh, for for meanie. That's another thing. When you look look at uh, Archie Bunker and uh, Fred uh, Sanford and you know all those characters. I mean, uh, uh, I don't think you could do that uh, today. They're all they're all old now no. or dead. So I guess it's no matter. But I'm even watching. I'm mean, watching reruns of House, and I'm thinking of all the little mm-hmm. stuff he says. And you know, it's not promoting misogyny or whatever it's it's him being a, a smart ass but it's like wow well, mm-hmm. you know and the racial stuff that goes back between him and uh Foreman and all that i mean it's like it's all part of a intellectual kind of goofy game and now i'm thinking like wow even friends you know you know david schwimmer oh. from friends said that he wishes that yeah, he acknowledges the white privilege in the show, and he wishes they would make it all black friends to, you know, atone or whatever. It's mm-hmm. like, come on. Mm-hmm. Well, and you've got all these things that are being, and everything's trying to appease a situation. When you, if you have a child who's doing something really, really wrong, can't talk to him and say, no, honey, don't do that. You know, your mommy and daddy will be sad if you do that. You've got to react. And people just don't understand that with the, with what's going on. There is no appeasing the energy force that's trying to rearrange our, our country as we once knew it. So it is, it's very, very, very tedious. And I'm thinking, I don't, I can't give an opinion I, because I don't think it's one, one energy. I don't think it's that guy in Sweden or France, wherever he lives. I don't think he's that powerful anymore, but he might be. I don't think it's, I can't say it's the Chinese because they have a hard enough time just taking care of themselves. And one of the things about the Chinese, though, which we've all forgotten, was all oh, last October they were what was go, what was going on in China last October. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. Very, very. Oh, it was the trade stuff. Do. It was the trade stuff that was going on, right? Their trade war. Yeah, it was yeah. H- Hong Kong. Oh, they're Hong, they're the protesters. Well, that's not China, but I got your point, yeah. Yeah, it was the Hong Kong uh, riots in China. Yeah, I remember and, saying that when this broke out, it was like, how convenient, now they disappeared. Right, exactly. And they, they popped up again not too long ago, but we don't hear a thing about them. And But they're, they're not as destructive as what we've just gone through. And the one thing that I really get upset about is how on earth are the insurance companies going to cope with this? I don't know how many police vehicles have been destroyed. And the reason why they wanted the South Ford plant on, in, on um, Stony Island to reopen is because they make that uh, SUV for um, the police trucks. 
And it's really, um, so they need, they know they need to put new police trucks. How many police vehicles have been destroyed? And just that besides the buildings, it's unreal to think that this has happened in our country under normal circumstances. And I find it, um, the fact that we have, uh, we have a lot. We have a lot to be grateful for. It is the best country in the world, but boy, oh boy, the control here is way out of way, way, way out of out of any right, type you know, of normal so I, awareness. So I'm looking for some. Uh, you, you you know you feeling the. Uh, have you hey have you ever seen the um, that movie? Uh, oh gosh, no, I'm not going to be able to say the name of the movie. Um, Interstellar. No. Okay. Well, if you, I don't know, if you so care to, I thought it was a very good movie, watch it. There's one scene in there, it won't give anything away, but uh, the guy is mm-hmm. pulling, he he has moved into a higher dimension, and he's trying to communicate back in the lower dimension. I don't think that's giving anything away. And he, uh, mm-hmm. in order to do so, it was very limited, right? So he, he was able to, the, the entities that created this ability for him to communicate back, uh, he was pulling strings. I thought that was very symbolic. He was pulling these long strings and he had to figure out which ones affected energy in the room in which this person was. And as he was pulling these strings, you know, like a book fall off the shelf and, you know, he was trying to figure out how to communicate back to the, uh, uh, this, this, and I thought it was very, very a good, I don't know if it metaphor or, you know, in that, that energy aspects uh, can be pulled, especially from a higher, uh, but I think people can pull them uh, in, in spite of being lower. Like for us, we can pull each other or our other energies by, you know, our actions and thoughts and whatnot. And it just seems like what's going on now is there's a lot of, I don't know, higher entities, demons, if you will, or whatever, that seem to be having a greater handle into fooling around with our energy because i mean people are like they're, they're ready to explode blow up i mean it's it's pretty volatile out there it is very volatile every very volatile which makes the normal normal mundanities lock themselves in their house instead of going to the show instead of going to a baseball game instead of going to a um even going to a party we, we've been locked away from any type of social gathering. And if you're in a social gathering, you will get a cross-section of people and their thoughts. And most of us, even if we're in, in a, a close family situation, or if you're in a situation where you've got uh, good friends that you haven't gotten in touch with for a long time, um, we have some friends who are, had a... Um, uh, their anniversary party was going to be in um, downtown at one of the hotels. And they had, um, that was canceled, of course, and because it was going to be like 150 people. Then they re- re-signed it for October. Well, they've already got a cancellation for that. And now they're talking maybe next year. Well, this is, economically, this is a disaster. This is, I mean, We've, we have so we're going to have such a taxation situation. It's going to be unbelievable because all the what is normally been tax money is not going to be there from grocery stores, from theaters, from racetracks, etc. So it's a um, it's a major issue for finances. No. And once we, we no go um, ahead finish it finish it once once we've destroyed the economical part of the country, we're really in trouble. And it's it's a sad situation. I've been trying to get to my bank for a month and a half to take care of some things, and I need to go to the lobby, and the lobby's not open. Okay, okay, well, just come to the drive-in. I've got a huge jar of change that is collected up. I, what am I, how am I going to use a jar of change at the, at the drive-in? Oh, well, knock on the door. I tell them at the window, 
No, no. <laughs> it's just kind of like unbelievable. So we're in the war you they have messed with our with our psyche. They've messed with our health. They messed with our economy. And now they're messing with our future. Like we have none. And that's really a sad, sad state of affairs. So as you pull on those strings, I'm thinking that's probably why I brought that metaphor up. As you get uh, uh, kind of insight from uh, higher perspectives. I mean, I mean, can you give us any kind of a, uh, like what's going on here, or what do you see happening? Uh, you know, who- Unfor- unfortunately, right now we're dealing with a negative is always ten times stronger than a positive. And what happens in a situation like this? I've been doing some reading and seeing how I've been locked in the office for three months now. I've been doing a lot of reading, but I can't read anymore because I can't focus myself in a situation that I can read anymore. It's it's just really, it's not within me at this time. So that's telling me what my normal activity would be has been changed. So we do have to realize each and every one of us has been locked, locked down. And because we're being locked down, we're, we're, we're not going to be as good as we once were. Uh, they were just talking, um, the other day they were talking to one of the football players. And he's, he's crazy doing all his stuff at home in an um, exercise pattern. But he, it's not the same thing. When you're not being challenged by other members, when you're not being challenged by um, equal, equal people with your own strength, it just doesn't work. So it's all of our stuff is there. We have what we call the chakra systems. The chakra systems are the things up and down our spine, and they're color coded. They're red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Now these nerve endings on our spinal cord are the same whether it's on a giraffe, or whether it's on a human, or whether it's on a um, a frog. So we all have the same nervous system. And because right now it's it's great to be able to be in the blue and purple range because that's a higher vibration. But that brings me to my readings. I, I love to read, but I just, uh, right now I'm st- standing with it. I might be able to do a reading for yeah, a chapter, but I can't get any more than that with a book. That's telling me that my chakra systems are blocked. And when you talk about these strings, those are the basic, uh, the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and uh, red, purple are the chakra, the main chakra systems. But there's actually like 5,000 extensions of those. So it's, it's if, you're, if you can pull yourself to the top to give us that. But what I will say is, the ones who they're telling us that it's going to be rough and I hate to say this I'm getting like I hate to say boy I hate to say this Uh, they say it's going to be rough until Halloween and by by Halloween we're going to see things being a little bit better come around the first part of August but we're still, they're going to go to school, they're going to close the schools, they're going to open the schools, they don't really know what they're going to do with the schools, and the teachers can't touch anybody, and they're all all difficult that way. But the, um, so we're going to go through another phase where we go, we get things back to normal, then they go to school, then there's going to be an issue with that. Uh, but I'm, I'm feeling this isn't over by a long shot. And the negative forces that are there are really, really, um, really, really strong. But we've got to fight against it. And if we can get enough energy pulling up higher and higher and higher, it will make a difference. Now, when you say you're using the word it, are you referring to it meaning the virus or it meaning the whole thing? There's a whole big political football abuse thing going on. So I don't know what is encompassing in the it that you're saying. 
I well, I think the virus. Um, how can I? Say? The virus was well. The virus was well orchestrated to create a first step downward for our economy. The virus has come back again slightly, but the political the political people that are involved is there's so much going on that we any of us who are aware there's a lot more going on than what what we see on on basic CNN a lot more. Oh yeah. I but, mean, well, see, I, I've been in this now with the show and all that, and CNN, MSNBC are all propaganda arms of this revolutionary uh, group, and it's all mm-hmm. being lie. I mean, it's, the stuff that's coming out is amazing, amazing lies. But the the the, the thing is, is that with with this uh, vaccine, now I want to give you a couple of things on it. I want to see if you can get any vibes on it. The vaccine... First off, there's never been a vaccine for a corona-type virus. I mean, you know, SARS is corona-type. AIDS, for that matter, is corona-type. Mm-hmm. So there's never been a vaccine for it. And so they're going to come out with this vaccine. They're going to make it mandatory, or they want to. And the virus they're working for, they just came out with some information. There's 100 companies with trying to do this. They're going to make an actual RNA-based virus, uh, an RNA vaccine. Now, the way COVID works is there's an RNA virus that attaches to the cell, delivers the RNA code into the DNA, which alters it and makes the cell reproduce more virus codes. And actually, in the healthy body, it's called an ensome. Uh, cells send information with, uh, with RNA ensomes to one another. But when a virus comes from the outside in, they call it like a virus, we'll say. So it now makes copies of itself via this affected cell and spreads it out. So their goal is they're going to make their own virus, let me call it that, it's going to be a vaccine, it's going to be an RNA information, which is going to go into your cells, change your DNA with the intent of making your cells not listen to the virus anymore. And to me, I heard that, it sounds horrifyingly insane. You're going to change my DNA? I mean... Exactly. Even if they're going, even if what they were doing was true, all they have to do is alter the DNA enough so that the virus no longer fits. For example, if you give this virus to a dolphin, it doesn't work because a dolphin DNA is different enough, so it doesn't work. And so they're going to alter the DNA in a in, in in a human. Now, do they have the knowledge and the experience of knowing the DNA genome that well? that they can go in and tweak no. a couple things, and then yet their mechanism is going to be that well-made that it doesn't make mistakes? It sounds crazy, but that's what they want to do and mandate it. Mm-hmm. And that you can't... That how do we... How did we come up with a point? Uh, we've lost 120,000 people in the United States now. And in the United States... Um, over the last three months. Now, a major point, major count there are where elderly people with a pre-existing condition. In fact, if I can inter- interject, I just saw this news sure. release. 30, 43% of all U.S. deaths were within nursing homes. Right. 43% now, of the deaths. Now, if we were doing a... I just heard the other day that 70,000 people died last year with um, um, the, the, I want to say Cobra, it's not Cobra, with the um, the painkillers, I can't think of what they were called. Oh, yeah, opioids. The opioids, opioids, opioids. Yes. yeah. And they, we lost 70,000 people with opioids last year. Now, they were all prescribed by a doctor somewhere down the line. So when you think if we lost 70,000 last year and we lost 120 so far this year with the uh, corona, that's breaking it down to like 40,000 people that actually really died with corona. 
but they love to throw these numbers at us. And how do we... And once you've gone to a nursing home, there's a reason you're in a nursing home. It's to get care. And if you have a, a pre-existing condition, which is terminating your life, that's something that, that happens to many, many people, maybe almost all of us at one time. Surprise, surprise. And with that idea, this is like the, the corona did something terrible to these poor old people. Well, then they took what they were searching for um, the breathing devices, like, um, not the mask, the, I uh, can't think of it right now. And they needed all respirators. They needed all the respirators. Well, they said in the very beginning that the respirators weren't going to do any good. How did that happen? And so there's been many, many, so many of these things that are so... Yeah, in the very beginning, though, uh, I, mean, I could, you know, in the very beginning, they didn't, they weren't trying to use this politically. And then, it, then it dawned on them early on, wait a minute, we could use this. And then all of a sudden it switched over to everyone has to stay home, everyone's got to wear a mask. It's kind of shifted. And you got, they got video of all these people saying there's no big deal. Go out uh, and uh, do your outdoors or go to parties or whatever. No big deal. And these same people now are on the other side. But it, probably a light bulb came on and they had an idea. Wait a minute, we could use this to shut down things. Because Trump's exactly. biggest asset was, two biggest assets was the economy and the momentum in his rallies. And boom, both of those right. were shut down. And when you lose that momentum, you're in trouble. And that's what our destiny is all about, our going to our future, going to our awareness. And this whole thing, and within a certain period of time, how did this come around the world? There was a gentleman from China who, uh, I believe, I, I, might, I might be misquoting, I can't remember exactly how that went, but he took, he, he had a, um, a winery, and he made wine in China. And he sold wine and did okay. He never, ever did well on his product, and his product was a successful opportunity. So when he had, um, when he had, uh, he, he went to Italy, but a whole town in Italy, when he bought the whole town in Italy, he brought over 100,000 Chinese to work at his winery in Italy. Now he's selling Italian wine, and everybody's paying twice as much for the same wine that they were paying for in, um, when he was making it in China. And he's become a multimillionaire from this. But when the coronavirus hit, all these people went back home for Chinese um, New Year's, and they were there, celebrated Chinese New Year's. Then they turned around and they went to went back to Italy. All of a sudden, Italy has a major coronavirus problem. So it's so so stupid. It's just unbelievable that these these so called strange stories we've heard about and stuff. It's a major major cover up. What are they covering up? Now, it's interesting to hear you say this stuff because for people who have listened to the show before, you have not uh, been on computer much. I mean, your information is more from uh, TV, n news, newsprint, and whatnot. And in the, in, in the mm -hmm. past, we've discussed things that I have found out via Internet and all that, which was uh, uh, interesting and news to you, whatever. And now you're saying the things that uh, are not being said on the mainstream and you are saying them, so uh, you you are, I think, coming around uh, to having other uh, information uh, that is con conveying actual reality instead of having the uh, craziness on the mainstream. So I'm asking, what was your, you know, what what where did you start to look at, or what was your motivation for branching out? I mean, not that you didn't just sit by the TV. I mean, but in a general uh, yeah. sense, one of the reasons I talk with you is because you didn't have the 
quote, contamination, let's say, of conspiracy theories. And when you mm-hmm. do see things on your own like that, I find that very fascinating. And it's unheartened because that means other people are seeing it as well. Exactly. Exactly. Now, there was just this past week, um, there was a gentleman who passed away. His name is, oh, let me read it here. His name is Steve Bing. Does that bring any name, any reason to you? What's his name? What's the name? Steve Bing. Steve Bing. No, I, I know a Chandler Bing. That's a wall. No, 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 no. I know a Bada Bing. <laughs> Bada Bing and a Chandler no. Bing. Oh. No. When you've got a chance, you just look up. I, it's, there's too much information on the article that was in the paper. Um, Steve Bing? He passed away. His, um, he was... Oh, let me see if I can get involved here. Um, Steve, Steve Bing. Steve Bing, B I N G. Okay, right, I got that. Hey, you just died a few days ago. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what were he you? He was a major, major benefactor to Bill Clinton. Okay, all right. Nancy Pelosi, Schumer. And a few others. Okay, I got that. I I remember now, and Uh, I see it. uh, Okay. Now, he also was, um, he, he, let me get this a little bit clearer here. Bill Producer. uh, Uh, mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Philanthropist. His grandfather left him, like, $100 million when he was 18. Uh, he was, he was very involved in the social life of Hollywood. Very, very much a, uh, I would say probably better than, uh, um, Hugh Hefner, as far as being dealt with. He also was, this was rather interesting. If you go down further in the article, it says, <laughs> okay, Elizabeth, he was involved with Elizabeth Hurley in a relationship. He had a child with her. Yeah, she and she, he also had a child with Kirk Kerkorian's wife. Okay, so what, now, what is, what's the, uh, what's the what are you working toward? A, yeah. Uh, strong, strong, strong connection with Bill Clinton, Bing, and Epstein. Uh, Epstein. Right. So there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of stuff about Bill and Epstein and him. And they've traveled together quite a bit while they were, when things were better in different time and stuff. And um, he had, uh, there's, there's, how can I put this? I, uh, according to the article, there was a, um, a lot of, um, Visiting with underage, under right. underage minors. Okay. So I mean, is it, I I'm not I'm trying to read here. Is this death natural, accidental, suicide? Well, he supposedly he was depressed, and he jumped out of a um, okay. four story apartment building. Yeah. So there's the potential uh, that perhaps some are saying in the background. Some are saying that. These people are all being legally hunted down, and that these suicides and whatnot are getting out of the ramifications of being found. But nothing has actually been done yet. So, uh, I mean, there has been a lot of trafficking arrests. If they're all let's call it the lower level, the foot soldier types, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. um, they may be working up their way 
and perhaps, you know, there's theories that perhaps he was going to turn evidence. And so then he quote, killed himself, you know, you know, uh, suicided, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, it's said, I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars this guy's worth, uh, further in the article, but, um, it seems to be a little bit difficult when you when you were a political a philanthropist and you've paid for many many things and you're still living a very very good life. And he said that the first article that was out there was because he was unable to go see his friends. That's why he jumped out of the window. Yeah. So I thought. That sounds a little bizarre. <laughs> but yeah. I'm not saying, but I, I think there's a lot more cover, window dressing. All right, so, so to, I mean, to, to put it all like in a, in a, a sentence is that the cabal uh, has been obviously corrupt and, and, and so forth, money and drugs and whatnot but are actually also with pedophilia, child sacrifice, you know, eat, drinking blood or whatever. Mm-hmm. All the stuff's going on. It mm-hmm. has been going on. It's been going on, you know, Caligula was no, you know, it wasn't even private about stuff. So, uh, right. so it's been going on forever. And now it's coming to light and you have somebody like Trump who doesn't have any blackmail on him. I mean, believe me, if they found anything on this guy, a parking ticket, they would impeach him, but they got nothing on him. And he's plowing, mm-hmm. supposedly plowing through. I haven't seen anything actually happen, but uh, he's been plowing through this uh, group and exposing things. And the, the latest things that have been exposed are um, the attack on him, him and his people from Obama and others. So mm-hmm. the, the point, the point that it seems to be is that what would, why would somebody fight with with a scorched earth policy? If it was just relinquishing power until the next election, they won't. It it, it happens. I mean, there mm. it hits happening throughout time. The only reason I could think of is that the stakes are so high, and not just being in power, not just missing your turn at the gate till the next time, but the stakes are so high because if this stuff come out to quote allegedly quote Hillary Clinton, they'll all be hanging from nooses. So there isn't any compromise. There isn't way any way to lose because the truth comes out of the deep, darkest, most evil secrets. The all of the people will turn against them. I mean, so that's what I see. We're up against it. If that's true, let's just assume that's true for now. <clears throat> How do you beat that without becoming them uh, psychopaths or without go sending out assassination teams to shoot them all? I mean. How do you beat that legally when half the legal and half the police and half the politicians are in on it? I would say, I would say it's it those two are are politicians. I would say what what Trump is trying to do is to clean the swamp, but in this case, it's they he had no 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 idea how deep the swamp really was. Right. And that's part of the deal because now even the, um, remember Rosemary, not Rosemary, I'll tell her, um, Marianne Williamson. Do you remember Marianne Williamson? Yes. yes. Okay. She was running for president. Right. Right. Which I thought and humorous, she, but... She, she had a couple little um, debates, and she says, I had no idea how deep this is, and she quit. You no, know, I mean, she, getting, she didn't getting, really like, trolling, but she yeah, quit. Getting 1% of the and vote doesn't comment, hurt, but, but yeah. Her comment was she had no idea how deep this was, and I thought that was a very strange comment. How deep? I think uh, Trump um, didn't know, and when he, because I saw his first meeting with Obama, and afterwards they had a press conference, and Trump looked he, like he was bewildered. I'm thinking like, oh boy, yeah. they, they pulled out the Anunnaki, came in there and bit off a child's head or something. They said, "Welcome to the real world." I mean, that's the kind of bewilderment that looked at him. So I think he got mm-hmm. a he got a taste of uh, what's really going on back there. 
Uh, and I think perhaps if there's another term, if things keep going this way, that they will be able to go and get all this evidence. But, you know, this election, mm-hmm. uh, if it's fraudulent or if people don't like him, don't want him, it's, it's it, you know, if, a, if Biden wins to me, it's like the end. It's, that's why we have to have an awareness. We have to keep reading. We have to keep paying attention to these things. Uh, these are very, very important. Little things like this Bing guy. Nobody ever heard of him before. And he was a major power play person. Uh, other things like... Um, uh, other things like... Uh, remember, when they were talking about Pizzagate... And how that was such a scandal, and they they shut that down real quick. But there's um, uh, there's something about a mockingbird too that is kind of interesting. But you, I, I don't know enough about it. To Project really Mockingbird. Talk about it. Project Mockingbird is is, is supposed to be where the they uh, the government uh, has the media uh, do a, do their thing for them, you know. Uh, which mm-hmm. you can, which I could see here, not the government in terms of like Trump, let's say government, but it's uh, in terms of the this this uh, neo Maoist uh, revolution. I got I got some mm-hmm. a few more minutes here. Um, so if you have, I've been I've been kind of interrupting you and stuff. If you want to get something out uh, in particular, now would be the time. Okay, uh, well, like I say. Please, please, please stay alert. Pay attention. We've got to pay attention. This is, it's critical that just like with all the statues, the first thing Adolf Hitler did in Germany was to knock down all the statues because he wanted to get rid of the people's history. Yeah, Mao, Mao in China, same thing. Yeah, and so we have to pay attention to this. This isn't just, I mean, I've seen many, many statues in my life. 90% of the time, I think I might know who the person was, but I don't read it, I don't see it, but I think, gee, that's really a pretty statue. Uh, I don't know how we got a Grant in Lincoln Park in Chicago, and we got Lincoln in Grant Park. I never did understand that. (laughs) It throws me off completely, but that's the way it is. And... um, but I look at it as a thing of beauty. It's a part of our, it's like, just, it's like looking at a beautiful garden or it's part of a beautiful garden. The idea of destroying this for just for your own personal dislike of people, your own personal fear, this is, no, this is absolutely totally unnatural. But that, that's what so please, please stay alert, pay attention. Um, and then, again, I'll go over that again. After I've read something about somebody, I would say, okay, I've been to the dark side, bring me to the light. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do to stay above the all this crap. So when you do that, you're going to be, you're, you will balance yourself out and it'll make a world of difference. When we have, I what I feel, I do feel, I hated to say that about Halloween, but I really have hopes that things will be almost natural. And, uh, but that'll be right before the election, so that's part of the craziness. But the powers to be, um, I never did, I, I never really, again, I never understood how Barack got in. And he was a he was just a nobody in Chicago, and then he became a state senator, and then all of a sudden he was a national senator, and then all of a sudden he's president. And it was such a well orchestrated maneuver. And what happened, I feel, he was sure after he was going, Hillary would be put right into play, right into play, and there would be no that. None of us would know any of this. Right, right. None of us would have any of this information whatsoever. And when Hillary finally decided that she lost the election, it was days before she decided to do that. It was 
rather strange. I don't know whether you remember her concession speech or not, but do you know what she was wearing? A purple. It's like her old man was, too. Her old man. Everybody on that on that stage was in purple and black. National morning colors. They, just like they put on the bump bunnings at police station, purple and black are national morning colors. So they, the people who have been in charge have done this from the day he walked in. They tried to get him. They tried to get him. They couldn't. Uh, remember, there was a time they had pictures of him being peed on in Russia by two hookers. And I mean, just such stupid stuff. It's unbelievable. And um, but he's 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 fought, he's still fighting the fight. I if I was him, I'd say screw it. I'm going to go play. I'll I'll live my life on my golf course and I'll enjoy the rest of my life. But I think he realizes that the position he has is so important right now to fight off this. And this is this was a this was a fight between the public Republicans and Democrats in the United States. All of a sudden, we have a national fight, an international fight between the corona and the uh, the, the Republicans. You know, you, Republicans can't go to that uh, um, rally because they'll all die with corona. Well, they're, they're not all. They're not all. The Republicans, to me, are, are are being a little bit wussy on this. They should be a little more aggressive. It's almost like yeah. somebody's got some dirt on them, and they're can only can do so much. I don't know. That's it exactly. They'll they'll make it look good. There's one or two. I think um, Jim Jordan is uh, yeah. still pretty solid. Yeah, he's solid. good. Yeah, but like. but so, but these guys have been there for years and years, and they've either, they've either did a deal with some bank to make money, or they did something else. And even if you want to read, really read something. Uh, look at what Bill and Hillary made on a cor- a company. It's a, it's a hedge fund. They they pulled out a million and a half dollars or twelve million, a ridiculous amount of money on dividends on their stock f- portfolio from this company. Yeah, now, Charles company, or- Charles Hotel has been going nonstop for years now on on this. And there's like a, he said there's millions. Well, I mean, there's quite a bit of illegal stuff that's been going on. I mean, like lots, hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of violations, and they're just getting mm-hmm. passed. Yeah, and this this particular company that they have has a strong connection to the Soho House. Well, let's we'll talk about that next time. <laughs> All right. Well, it's good uh, good having you by. I'll have to do this uh, more often here. Now, yeah. I, now I just popped in my head there, so. Uh, Good talking to you. <laughs> we'll talk about that next time. Right. Okay, kid, I'll talk to you again. Right. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> All right. We'll see you uh, next time. I got to go to run. I'm running late. Like, go to one day. Fire is a production of IPS Media Works on the Onsig Radio Network of Stations.